Hey everybody, welcome back. We are on externalities and now we're gonna do positive production externalities. Now, if you've been watching these, this is the last one to do as far as like just introducing the different types of externalities. And why did we put positive production externalities last? Because they're kind of weird, okay? Uh, examples are very hard for these, especially if you really stay strict to the fact that you're getting a per unit additional benefit when you produce the good. If you try to come up with examples for that, it's difficult. Here's the one we're gonna use beehives okay you're doing you're making honey you got a bunch of beehives that's what you do you produce honey but those bees besides making honey they're flying around and they're doing some cross pollinization right we're getting flowers all over the place and that's beneficial i don't know maybe we have a wildflower company and that's definitely beneficial to them but even if we don't it's still going to benefit us from an environmental standpoint and a viewing standpoint like the the flowers themselves are beautiful so third parties are going to benefit from the production of the honey. That's the key, okay? We're producing something and somebody's gonna get a benefit that the market participants are not absorbing themselves, okay? So, with that said, we're gonna do two different graphs. We're gonna do the one, the first one's gonna be the way that I normally teach it, the way that I come um, to these type of problems and do them, the way I kind of think it through. But we wanna cover our bases here at Econ Busters. And some of your professors are gonna do it kind of this other way, and I'll show you that on that graph, okay? I'll be there in a second. Start here, the basic way, the way that I do it, okay? I got a positive production externality. The way that I like to teach my students is I say, hey, it's an externality from production. So there's no externality from consumption. So I tell my students, hey, go right here and put marginal social benefit to show there's no externality at all from consumption. It's from here. Next question is it's a positive production externalities, so where are we gonna put the marginal social cost curve? Are we gonna put it above it or below it? Well, this line measures a cost, right? These vertical distances are a cost. Well, if we're getting positive production externalities, if third parties are being impacted positively, that we wanna reduce our cost, right? We wanna subtract that from our cost. So that benefit, that per unit benefit, is going to be subtracted from our cost. And we're gonna put in our MSB line, sorry, not MSB, our MSB, C line below the MPC line. That is to show that this is the cost the producers receive, but then when you take into, the, into account the third party benefits, the societal cost is actually below. And what's the market outcome that we get? Market participants left alone, making decisions on their private costs and private benefit. We go to that dot right there, we put QM. However, if we, what we really want society to do is consider our total cost and our total benefit. And if total cost and total benefit were considered, we would produce all the way out there. Q opt, positive externalities. When we have positive externalities or positive production externalities, the market will under allocate resources to the production of the good. We actually wish that more of this good would have been produced. Now, some professors, okay, the way that they look at this is they say, the big key is that it's a benefit. Third parties are receiving a benefit. So what they want you to do is they say, hey, just add it to the benefit curve you've already had. Don't put it on the cost side, just add it here. Who cares whether it comes from production or consumption, okay? So professors that teach it this way, they're saying, I don't care if it comes from production or consumption, what I care about is that it's a benefit, so add it to the benefit curve. So let's do that. This is an additional benefit, so we've already got the private benefit being measured by that curve. We're gonna add on the third party benefit. So the marginal social benefit curve goes right there, marginal social benefit. And what's the market outcome? Market participants left alone. Supply demand, just look at supply and demand. That's our Q market. However, what's our Q opt? Right here where the Oops, I forgot to do something. I didn't put my marginal social cost curve up there. Remember, since there is no third party cost, since there's no third party cost, whether from production or consumption, I can put my MSC right there, okay? So my MSC, my MSB, they're intersecting right there. Q opt. Now, let's take a look at this. I'm gonna kind of pivot around here. What we got over here when we did it the way that I normally teach it, we got QM, we've got a larger Q opt, and look at that, that's how much more we wish we would have produced. Same result, QM, 
Qopt, Qopt is more than Qm. That's how much more we wish were produced. So both ways work, two ways of coming about these type of problems. Hopefully that made sense to you, and if it did, you are a long way to really understanding externalities, a long way towards doing it, okay? You've made a, long, a lot of ground here. Anyhow, see you in the next video.